All right, so now we're here with part two with the setup video for our Sony X90L television. So we're gonna have to get ready to plug it in, pull the stuff off. Now we finally got to, we got the TV basically set up and everything. So we're going to go on ahead and get ready to get the power cable and the remote. Well, we'll probably may just even use the remote that we currently have because all Sony's um, remotes are compatible with all Sony TVs, including like if you get like, like let's say for example, you have a X um, a Sony X77K or whatever of uh, Sony's budget last uh, previous TV. It it any of the remotes that you have from their budget lineup will work on their premium lineup, and mostly they're practically the same. So no matter what remote you have, even if it's from a 2018, 2019, or 2020 model Sony TV, they will work on current, newer Sony model televisions, and even for newer Sony TVs in the future. So, just to get it give you guys a heads up there. But, we're getting ready to get the power cable, and we're getting ready to hook it up and get it set up. So, this is the power cable. Now, the only thing that does worry me about this TV is I absolutely hope that we got a very good Sony TV because we have only had one bad Sony TV that we've had to replace with the same model to get a different one, and we luckily got a better one that time. But... We did have a problem with the X800H, the X900H, and the X90K. So hopefully our X90L is a perfect TV with no issues. But we're going to find out here in just a couple of moments here. So now we're going to go on ahead and get this bad boy plugged in. And we're, we're a little bit stupid now. We literally put the TV up without trying to plug in the power cable. So now we have to scoot it up to see where the power cable is. But it, it shouldn't be that tough, that hard to find. So if we can stick our neck through this or just to get a little glimpse at it. All right. All right, we found it now, so we're, we're, we're safe. And now we got to try to get her plugged in here, if we can. Let's see here. I'm going to try to stick my neck through my stand and our TV. There we go. And we move it out. All right. Now the TV is plugged into the television or well I don't know why I said plugged in itself but we finally got the back plugged in and then now now we got power on it so now it is time to untape the cutting board well plastic and box frame and all that stuff or whatever the heck you call this thing on the screen all right so we don't need that we gotta undo let's see one two three four five, six, seven. Wow, we got seven bits of tape we have to undo. But this is for protection reasons, so Sony does a very good job at, protect, at protecting their TVs. So we're going to hopefully get this all done. All right, there's one. We're just going to put the tape on the box because we don't have nowhere else to put it. <laughs> Man, this actually ain't as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually quite easy. All right. Well, if we can get this one, this one's the hardest. There we go. Plug that one. There we go. And it's just falling off. All right. Oh, that one pulled a good bit of the freaking box cover off. 
And then we gotta pull this one, put it on there. And we got two more to go. All right, there's that one. And then one more to go. And well, we can get it here. Oh, well, that one's only ripping halfway. But there we go. Now we got it. Now we just plug this on. <laughs> I don't know why I say plug, but you, you get what I'm saying. All right. And voila, the box frame is completely taped off. Now we got to undo the strap. Wow, <laughs> I just sounded like a girl screaming, so <laughs> I am so sorry about that, but that's just what you get with uh, stuff like this. That just did not sound right at all. And we undo this. Oh, he's grabbing that one too. So this one doesn't even have, wow. And we got one more. All right, now we gotta figure out how to get it. And oh, now we got it. This is definitely a little bit of a trickier one. Oh, there we go, we got it. All right, and it looks like there is not no other one on there. So, at least on another positive side note with Sony, is that they don't have a whole, like, screen protector on it. So, that's what that looks like with the box, and that was actually a good bit smart. Honestly, I think Sony does a very good job at protecting their TVs. But... Now it is time to get this television finally turned on and let's see if there is anything wrong with it. So this is the moment of truth. So let's get this TV started. And boom, it's turning on. So now we have to do all the setup process. And so far it's looking good, like there's nothing cracked, no nothing. Everything is looking good on this television. We're just gonna do basic because that's truthfully what our stuff is. So I'm going to try to try to block as much of the screen as I can for like internet reasons and such, even though you probably aren't even nowhere near here. Let's see, all right. I could just skip this, I think, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go on ahead and get it basically squared away. Okay, so the one thing I am going to, however, am going to say is I definitely don't like, and it might it might just be because I'm using a previous model uh, remote, but it does feel like it's there's a little bit of some latency with you when you press a button on the screen and it's almost like a second at responding to what you press. So that's one thing I'm definitely not too thrilled with, but like, as I can see from looking at the screen and I can even see that the black levels look better than they did on the X90K. Like, usually you will see some blooming, which I do see just a tiny bit, but so far nothing crazy, so. Here's going to come to some nice pictures. Now, that is a nice intro on Sony TVs, and that's what Sony has done for pretty much a while. So when you get done with the basic setup, you're going to get to the Bravia setup, which is basically letting you know of, like, the previous updates, and, like, right here it says... 
last revives date was March 1st, 2023, so it was when Sony announced its 2023 TVs, such as this one, and their 2023 lineup. So, what you do is you have to just go through it in order to uh, get to everything, and then you accept, precede, god damn, my freaking eye keeps itching and such, and then it, get, it goes through all this stuff, and this is something new. We usually just leave it off because we get better brightness like that. And that's another thing I forgot to do real quick is to plug in the HDMIs. So we're going to get the HDMIs plugged in right now. That way we have our consoles and everything basically done. All right. We're almost there. Now we got the Series X and boom. Now we got all of our consoles, all four of our consoles plugged in. So we're going to skip this one. And then it says select devices, which Sony TVs, as from what we know, they do not recognize like Xbox as being connected. But I do see Sony TVs in the future with some software update when you got brands like Vizio, Samsung, LG, and even TCL that basically name their inputs to whatever platform is plugged in, even if it is an older console, such as a Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, or if it's a Nintendo console, such as the Wii U or the Nintendo Switch. So I do expect Sony TVs to eventually be able to announce like each individual platform, but then again, they may not because it is a Sony and Sony makes the PlayStation, so it may not even do Nintendo Switch. But I think Sony TVs do do Nintendo Switch, which we'll have to try out sometime later. So then you just go to this, go to, like, if you have it wall-mounted or whatever, you just do tabletop or whatever. We don't do none of that, so we're going to skip. And we're going to skip this, and then, no thank you, and then we go through this, and then I, it looks like we're checking for updates. All right, we save all that. Then we got this, and then we're done. We can actually get started to mess with the TV. So, now since this TV is officially 100% set up, we're going to give our first impression on it here in just a second. Gotta go grab something real quick. Alright, where did we put this? Alright, so we're going to go on ahead and we're going to start off with a PlayStation 4 console. And as you're seeing right now on the screen, as soon as we turn it on, it already registers that it is a PlayStation console plugged in to HDMI 1. So we're going to get ready to plug her in. And as I can say, I mean, so far the TV's looking great. We don't have to return it as of right now. So, yeah, it's definitely not looking all that bad, honestly. And I can definitely tell it's definitely looking a tad bit sharper than the X90K, and Sony's are known for having really nice, clean sharpness. But we have to actually edit our game picture settings. As a matter of fact, now you're getting ready to learn how to calibrate this TV. Oh, and then, yeah, that's another thing too. So in gaming mode, you have some other options, and you can share a screen size custom setting. You got screen size, and then you got type, chair, crosshair type, crosshair, black equalizer, motion blur reduction. So you got a, a di you got a select few like basic gaming features on this TV. And then what this TV also does really good as well on is if you look right down here at the bottom, it will tell you what the resolution is, what the input in the console is called, whether if it's a PlayStation console for an example and what the resolution, what the 
Hertz is, and then whether if you're in SDR, HDR, or Dolby Vision. So that's right there is what is going to give you like what resolution, your frame rate, and whatever that your game is playing, and what input, and what system you're on, which is very, very unique. But we're going to go ahead and show you guys on how to calibrate. Now, as you see, it just got more pretty, more bright, more vivid, because we're on vivid mode. Now, we love to match our picture settings with vivid on all of this, you know, our gaming mode. So with all of this, it's pretty much practically the same as any other Sony TV. And, okay, so 60 is still the number. So we're going to go back to game mode. And we're going to do everything as it was shown. So if you ever get a Sony TV or you already have one and you was wondering of how to calibrate your TV Honestly, people can calibrate their TVs however they want, but when it comes to gaming, in game mode, we love to match the vivid mode so we can get those nice, punchy, vivid colors and bright highlights and just punchiness in the picture quality itself. So that's what we do is we basically check what vivid mode is, like all the settings, and we completely match all the settings that match vivid mode into game mode so we get the vivid mode at like experience while keeping game low latency basically turn on because if you play any other mode that's not graphics or game mode you're going to have higher input latency when you game but on graphics and game mode are the only two modes that you will get the lowest input lag possible for the quick response time for gaming so you can only get that on graphics mode and game mode so but this is just if you guys want to do it but this is what we do is we just basically match basically how we just basically match everything into basically what it does and you know what i'm actually noticing a feature that um is actually removed actually from this I don't know what the heck it is, but it's actually removed. That's kind of a bit strange. But as the color was on 60 on Vivid, so we like to do that, and then we have to match Cool. And as you've seen on Cool, the picture mode actually does kind of get bright on Cool. And then here's Live Color, and then you could just see, see how much better that the colors are looking. And actually, I'm actually impressed right now like, I'm actually going to say, like, her hair actually does look a tad bit better than on our previous model that we had up here, the X90K. So, that is definitely another good feature. And then, of course, you got the clarity, which is basically nothing really to brag about. And then you got smooth gradation that you can honestly do. So, we don't worry about that either. And... And then you got different HDMI, HDR color modes right here. So this is basically like if you want to turn HDR on without playing games that don't support it. So like let's say you're playing like what we're on, a PlayStation 4 Pro, and you want to play a game like let's say for an example, the PlayStation 4 version of Grand Theft Auto 5. The PlayStation 5 version of GTA 5 does support, however, HDR but if you want to play the PlayStation 4 version on your PS4 and you want to have, you know, HDR punchy highlights, you have the option to choose HDR from HDR mode. But then you also got HLG and then you got basically off as well as auto, which auto is basically going to play at SDR and only play the games that do HDR automatically turn HDR on. Now, this is for like, I think like, the different brightness so yeah the screen just got brighter but honestly we're going to keep that on there and then you got different color options like right here you can just tell how much better the colors are getting when we go to a few actually that one's a little bit too much but i would honestly say 
Adobe RGB actually does kind of look a little bit more richer, in my opinion, but we're just going to keep it on auto. But that's another feature that Sony TVs do have that I know not, of, not a lot of other brands do have. So there's that for you. So other than that, that's kind of pretty much it. So minus actually everything with this screen, honestly, everything's actually looking pretty good. I don't see very much dirty screen effect. Like, cause that, that is a really big issue with um, just LCD TVs in general is you might have some spots on the screen where they'll look brighter and some spots may look dimmer. Honestly, I can personally say I'm not even barely seeing that. Now, like, yeah, I know, like, down here, the bottom part of the TV looks a little bit more, like, darker than up here, but that's just because of what we're on and just everything. It's just what we're basically got turned on. As a matter of fact, we might actually see if the other modes do it too. Yeah, just a tiny bit. But other than that, minus actually, I think it could be just because that bar down there too, in a way. But once we go back to there, you can just tell that we almost exactly look like Vivid Mode. So, so far with our first impressions after turning on this TV, Everything is absolutely looking very solid right now. Like, I, I'm actually looking very, very pleased with this TV. And like I said, I don't see very much dirty screen effect on this TV. Except, I do see just a tiny bit, like, in that section. But, that's just expected with an LCD TV. Like, you're not going to get a 100% perfect even, you know, color background of any kind whatsoever, because that's just, that's just a, what a LED TV is capable of doing. But if you don't want dirty screen effect and you want a TV that looks even and perfectly clean across the board, you're going to have to go with an OLED TV. But, but if you sit far back from a TV like this, you're not going to tell that the dirty screen effect is even there. Because honestly, when I come, we come back to where our phone is, I mean, we barely see it. We barely see the dirty screen effect on there, like the slightly brighter spots of the screen. But other than that, when it comes to the clarity, I am definitely 100% a little bit impressed with this TV. And it looks like Best Buy made a good bit of money again from us and we don't have to return another TV like we've had to return a couple before because of them being bad panels especially when it came to Samsung like Samsung like when it came to open box displays had just real bad uniformity but that was because we had open box display models that they've been running for so long so that it was pretty much like burn in on the screen but looking like this bad boy is so far looking like we don't have to return this one but that's going to pretty much do it for this unboxing and set up part two video for you guys so stay tuned in for our review our full review video in just a few days from now after we mess around and we play with the tv and see how good that the picture and how it performs especially with us playing games so we're going to get back to destiny 2 with our cousin and friend that we've been playing for basically the last few days but stay tuned in for the full review video of our x90l in just a few days but that's going to pretty much do it for this setup part two video for you guys so this is Tekken Gaming Reviews. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you could, smack that like button. And if you also enjoy the unboxing video, hit the like button on that. Subscribe if you are new to the channel, and we'll keep you posted with more at least gaming content and even new TVs like way far in the future, but not for quite some time because like we mentioned, 
this is going to be our final one for quite some time now. And this, like I stated, this is actually like we're 100% sure that this is what's going to happen. So, but mostly it's mostly going to be gaming news and gaming videos and just live streams on this channel from here on out for probably the next several months to year or so. But that's going to pretty much do it. So hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, comment down below if you were excited or if you thought that this is the model of the TV that we got. And if you're somebody that has this particular model or whatever Sony model or maybe the previous Sony X90K model, just let us know in the comment section down below if you have this model and how you like it or if you have the previous one and how you like it or if you were on the fence about buying the X90L. So just let us know in the comment section down below. This is Tech and Gaming Reviews. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next review video. Peace out.